Hello, my name is Camille and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you what can you do if you shoot a vlog, an interview, a talking head video, or basically something along those lines when you keep the camera rolling for at least a few minutes and the ambient light in your scene changes. This can very commonly occur, for instance, if you shoot outside on a cloudy day and the clouds are moving across the sky and they reveal the sun, hide the sun, reveal the sun, hide the sun and basically this causes the brightness of your scene to fluctuate between brighter and darker patches. And also not only brightness changes but also color temperature. So in this video I will show you how you can fix a shot looking like this right in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's get started. Alright, so before we start, let me just say one thing about the automatic exposure modes in your camera. Why wouldn't you want to use some kind of an automatic or semi-automatic exposure mode in your camera in a situation like this? Well, because those modes are very unreliable and I typically wouldn't recommend using any of those modes for shooting video. Same goes for white balance, because the camera can make decisions that are unpredictable and you will end up having more trouble in post-production. So it's better to just stick to manual and then fix any issues like this in post-production. So let's open Premiere Pro that I have right here on my laptop and let me show you an example. Okay, so here we have a clip from one of my previous video about efficient editing on a laptop. And as you can see, as I scrub through the clip, the brightness of this clip changes rapidly. We have a very dark spot, then we have brighter, then we have a little bit darker and a little bit brighter again. And honestly, when I was recording this video, I didn't even notice that the ambient light around me was changing. And only after I imported this footage into Premiere Pro, I saw this fluctuation in brightness. And at first I was like, oh man, the entire video is ruined, is it? It's not. So let me show you what can you do to fix that. So first up, let's make sure that we have Lumetri Color open right here. We have the Lumetri Scopes window that I have placed right here and we have the effects control that I have placed right here in the bottom left corner. If any of those windows is not open for you, you can always go to Window and then from here you can enable any of those windows that you need that you might not be seeing by default. These graphs on the left side are very important for this technique and if you don't know what they mean, the left one is called the waveform luma that basically shows the overall luminance of our shot from left to right and the right graph is called the vector scope YUV and it basically shows the distribution of color in our shot and also the saturation of those colors. So we will be judging the white balance of our shot on the vector scope and we will be judging the exposure of our shot on the waveform luma. So first up, let's scrub into the part that is relatively bright. For instance, right here we have like the peak brightness of the scene. And because both of those charts are very busy because they are showing the everything that is happening on our image, we are going to mask out only the part of the frame, for instance, right here, this left upper corner, that is pretty much constant throughout the entire clip. And that is because we will be trying to compensate for the changing brightness of the scene and color temperature by using lumetri controls. And we will be looking how the, how the portion of our image is changing throughout the entire clip. So let's select, for instance, this left upper corner. We're gonna go to the effects control. We're gonna take the pen tool and we are going to draw a mask that looks something like this, for instance. And now we can see that in our Lumetri, we see way less information and we can be more precise by judging our exposure by looking at this chart. And also in the vector scope, the entire chart is very much simplified. So now we want to have the Lumetri control right here in our effects control. And in order to do it, we can just change anything in the Lumetri, reset by double clicking to the default. And now we see the Lumetri control right here in our effects control. And we're going to expand the basic correction and we're gonna set the keyframes for temperature, tint, and exposure. We can see that we have keyframes here on the right side of the effects control panel. And then for instance, if we scrub to the left, look at the Lumetri control scopes. We're scrubbing to the left and the waveform is getting darker. For instance, here is like the darkest spot. And now what we have to do is just brighten our image by using the exposure slider on the right side so that the waveform will look pretty much like it looked before when we were on this spot of the clip. We can uh, use those arrows right and left and we can see that the graph on this waveform is pretty much similar. And now look at the vector scope. We can see that right here we are going towards the blue. So we need to warm up this image by sliding the temperature slider to the right. 
something like this and then we have to repeat this process by scrubbing through our clip and setting keyframes so that the chart on the waveform and the vector scope looks pretty much similar overall so let me just speed up this video a little bit so you don't get bored as i set up more keyframes And now that we have all of our keyframes, we need to make sure that the transitions between those keyframes are smooth because the changes in brightness in our scene are also smooth because like every process in nature, it has inertia, which means that there are no changes that happen abruptly. So we need to make sure that the transitions between our keyframes are smooth. And this can be very easily done. Let me show you. So you're going to want to select all of those keyframes and then right click on any one of them and go to Auto Bezier. And now we can expand this panel to see what's going on. We can hit the tilde key. And now we have the effects control on the full screen. And then if we expand this, for instance, we can see what is happening. We can see that the changes here at our keyframes are being eased out. So we have smooth transitions. And then we can also adjust the characteristic of this easing by grabbing these handles right here. So for instance, we can just click on a handle here and adjust how it looks. We can command click and then we will be adjusting only the right side but I wouldn't recommend doing that because you want to have smooth transition so that the viewer of your video doesn't even notice that you did anything to the brightness of the scene, right? So let's just see what happens if we scrub through the clip with our Lumetri adjustment and without it to see the difference. So we're going to go to the opacity here and disable our mask and then we can disable our Lumetri and again, this is what we had before so we have very significant changes in the brightness of our scene. And now with our Lumetri adjustment, let's enable that. It is pretty much equalized. As you can see, it could be better done, but I was just doing it roughly for the purpose of this video. But you can spend as much time as you need and set up as many keyframes as you need to make this perfect. The more keyframes you have, the more precise these adjustments of the brightness and the temperature will be on your clip. So you can spend as much time as you need to make it look good for you. Now that we have our correction as a Lumetri effect right here, what I would recommend you to do is just nest this clip, right click and nest. And now you can chop it up this nested sequence and basically progress with the edit of your video. And if you want to go back and tweak something around, maybe add more keyframes, maybe tweak the temperature or brightness or anything that you wish, you can just go inside this nested sequence and change the Lumetri effect on the original clip and it will be reflected by all of the clips, all of the occurrences of this nested sequence in your edit. So I can highly recommend you do something like this. I actually use the double nesting technique when I just nest the clips once and then nest them again. So I can always go back and change my color grading or even audio effects. And I actually have a separate video about this double nesting. So if you wanna check this out, the link will be up here. In my opinion, this is the most efficient way to edit videos. So I can highly recommend you check out that video. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button down below. It really makes a difference. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because I upload new videos pretty much every week and I already have a lot of filmmaking and photography tutorials on my channel. Basically, I focus on filmmaking and photography and just everything that revolves around things you can do with your camera. So if any of that is interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. But like I said, that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye-bye.